Well, hello, this is Mr. Doro. This is our second of a series of nomenclature videos. This one's on binary molecular nomenclature. And by the end of this, I hope you can write and name binary molecular compounds. Now, just like on binary ionic compounds, the binary molecular compound names are determined by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, which is something that you need to know. But the formulas are determined by the way the nonmetals share the electrons to become stable. And again, we're dealing with binary compounds, binary meaning two different elements, but this time molecular meaning two nonmetals that are sharing electrons, and they can join up in several different ways. And so there's not a set way that they have to be, that's why we have to come up with a different naming system. And that naming system involves prefixes. These are prefixes that you need to know and you need to memorize in order to name binary molecular compounds. And so the prefix for one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six hexa, seven hepta, eight octa, nine nana, and ten deca. So you want to write those down because we're going to have to work with those quite a bit. There are a couple of little special rules here too. The mono, you can drop the mono, meaning you don't have to put it on there, if it's the first element only. If it's on the first element and there's only one of them, you don't have to say the mono on it. The last element just like in binary ionic compounds, the ending is dropped and replaced with IDE. So we're going to practice some of that right now. All of these examples you should write down, they're binary molecular compounds. How do I know they're binary? Because they only have two different elements. How do I know they're molecular? Because those two elements are nonmetals. And so we're going to figure out the naming for them. Since they, the N and O, nitrogen and oxygen, can join up in several different ways, we have to say which way they're joining up by using those prefixes. And sometimes on these, they will, they will join up in ways that we don't want to reduce down the subscripts. And so if you look at this first one right here, N2O4, what we do is we have to find out how many of the nitrogens we have. There are two of them right here. So the prefix for two is di, so we're going to call this di nitrogen. Oops, nitrogen. And notice I did not drop the ending and put i'd. I only do that on the last element. And then we have four oxygens. The prefix for four is tetra. And so tetra and now, uh, something else you can do, you don't have to put tetra on there if it starts with a vowel. You can just make this tetrox, and instead of tetroxygen, we're going to call it tetroxide. Drop the ending and put I. Dinitrogen tetro tetroxide. Woo, that was hard for me to say. All right, and then we get that next one, PCL3. There's only one phosphorus on this, and so we don't want to put monophosphorus. It's really not wrong to, but I'm going to say don't do it anyways. It's extra writing. So we're just going to call this phosphorus, and notice I write the whole word out. Don't drop the ending. And then there are three chlorines, and so we have to account for those three chlorines, and the prefix for three is tri, trichloride. Phosphorus trichloride. This one right here, there's one carbon and one oxygen. And so the first one word is carbon. And then I can only drop the mono if it's on the first element. There's only one of the second element right here, so I have to say how many there are. So this is carbon monoxide. And notice I'm not putting monoxide. I just put, dropped the one of the O's and put carbon monoxide. And you've heard of that before too. This one right here, now many of you are going to want to say water on this, but that is not the IUPAC way of naming this. We have to say hydrogen is where we're starting out with, and hydrogen is a nonmetal. Hydrogen, but there are two hydrogens, so this is dihydrogen. Sorry about the capitals in the lowercase there. Dihydrogen and then one oxygen. A common mistake. People see the one and they say drop the mono, but you can't do you can only do that on the first element, not the last one. And so dihydrogen and this is monoxide. That's what you're drinking when you're thirsty. Dihydrogen monoxide. Well, writing the formulas for binary molecular compounds is really quite simple as long as you know what the prefixes mean and where to put those numbers that go along with those prefixes. So you write the, the elements with the number of, of the prefix as a subscript on the appropriate element. You don't have to check the charges at all. So we're going to practice these right now. 
I'm going to start out by showing you on this first one a common mistake that a lot of students make. They see the carbon and they write the C for carbon. That's not a mistake. That's good. But then they see this die right there and they say, oh, die, what's that? The prefix for die. Uh, oh, yeah, that's two. And so they write a two right there and then they say oxide. Oh, C2O. That is not carbon dioxide. This prefix right here goes on as a subscript on the oxygen. So this is not right. Instead, it's going to be carbon and then two oxygens, CO2. This next one, carbon tetrachloride. We have one carbon, and tetra means, what do you think? What do you think? Come on. You're right. It's four. Carbon tetrachloride is, there's chloride and a four subscript on the end of that. I'm not checking charges. I'm just using these prefixes. Diphosphorus pentoxide. All right, so that means there are two phosphoruses and five oxygens, P2O5. Dinitrogen trioxide. So we have nitrogen, and di means that there are two of them, and then three oxygens, O3, N2O3. As long as you know those prefixes and you know where to put them as subscripts on that element, you're going to be just fine. Okay, so that's it. So here are seven problems for you to do. I've got three names that I'd like you to write the formula for, and I've got four formulas that I'd like you to write the name for. Now there's one tricky thing that you got to watch out for in there, just one. And so when you find it, you just watch and remember your rules for binary compounds. All right, have a good day.